The innkeeper was as clean as his inn, with a gleaming white apron around his bulk. Rand was glad to see he was a stout man. He doubted if he would ever again trust his skinny innkeeper. His name was Rulon Alwine, a good omen, Rand thought, with so much of the sound of Emmons Field to it. And he eyed them up and down, then politely mentioned paying in advance. Not suggesting you're the sort, understand, but there's some on the road these days aren't too particular about paying up come morning. Seems to be a lot of young folks headed for Camelon. Rand was not offended, not as damp and bedraggled as he was. When Master Allwine mentioned the price, though, his eyes widened, and Matt made a sound as if he had choked on something. The innkeeper's jowls swung as he shook his head regretfully, but he seemed to be used to it. Times are hard, he said in a resigned voice. There isn't much, and what there is costs five times what it used to. It'll be more next month. I'll lay oath on it. Rand dug his money out and looked at Matt. Matt's mouth tightened stubbornly. You want to sleep under a hedge? Rand asked. Matt sighed and reluctantly emptied his pocket. When the reckoning was paid, Rand grimaced at the little that remained to divide with Matt. But ten minutes later they were eating stew at a table in a corner near the fireplace, pushing it onto their spoons with chunks of bread. The portions were not as large as Rand could have wished, but they were hot and filling. Warmth from the hearth seeped into him slowly. He pretended to keep his eyes on his plate, but he watched the door intently. Those who came in or went out all looked like farmers, but it was not enough to quiet his fear. Matt ate slowly, savoring each bite, though he muttered about the light from the lamps. After a time, he dug out the scarf Alpert Mull had given him and wound it around his forehead, pulling it down until his eyes were almost hidden. Matt got them some looks Rand wished they could have avoided. He cleaned his plate hurriedly, urging Matt to do the same, then asked Master Allwine for their room. The innkeeper seemed surprised that they were retiring so early, but he made no comment. He got a candle and showed them through a jumble of corridors to a small room, with two narrow beds back in a far corner of the inn. When he left, Rand dropped his bundles beside his bed, tossed his cloak over a chair, and fell on the coverlet fully dressed. All of his clothes were still damp and uncomfortable, but if they had to run, he wanted to be ready. He left the sword belt on, too, and slept with his hand on the hilt. A rooster crowing jerked him awake in the morning. He lay there, watching dawn lighten the window, and wondered if he dared sleep a little longer. Sleep during daylight, when they could be moving. A yawn made his jaws crack. Hey, Matt exclaimed, I can see. He sat up on his bed, squinting around the room. Some, anyway. Your face is still a little blurry, but I can tell who you are. I knew I'd be all right. By tonight I'll see better than you do. Again? Rand sprang out of bed, scratching as he scooped up his cloak. His clothes were wrinkled from drying on him while he slept, and they itched. We're wasting daylight, he said. Matt scrambled up as fast as he had. He was scratching, too. Rand did feel good. They were a day away from Four Kings, and none of Goad's men had showed up. A day closer to Camelin, where Moraine would be waiting for them. She would. No more worrying about dark friends once they were back with the Aes Sedai in the water. It was strange to be looking forward so much to being with an Aes Sedai. Light. When I see Moraine again, I'll kiss her. He laughed at the thought. He felt good enough to invest some of their dwindling stock of coins in breakfast. A big loaf of bread and a pitcher of milk, cold from the spring house. They were eating in the back of the common room when a young man came in, a village youth by the look of him, with a cocky spring to his walk and twirling a cloth cap, with a feather in it, on one finger. The only other person in the room was an old man sweeping out. He never looked up from his broom. The young man's eyes swept jauntily around the room, but when they lit on Rand and Matt, the cap fell off his finger. He stared at them for a full minute before snatching the cap from the floor, then stared some more, running his fingers through his thick head of dark curls. Finally, he came over to their table, his feet dragging. He was older than Rand, but he stood looking down at them diffidently. Mind if I sit down? he asked, and immediately swallowed hard as if he might have said the wrong thing. Rand thought he might be hoping to share their breakfast, though he looked able to buy his own. His blue striped shirt was embroidered around the collar and his dark blue cloak all around the hem. His leather boots had never been near any work that scuffed them, that Rand could see. He nodded to a chair. 
Matt stared at the fellow as he drew the chair to the table. Rand could not tell if he was glaring or just trying to see clearly. In any case, Matt's frown had an effect. The young man froze halfway to sitting and did not lower himself all the way until Rand nodded again. What's your name? Rand asked. My name? My name? Ah, call me Peter. His eyes shifted nervously. Ah, uh, this is not my idea, you understand. I have to do it. I don't want to, but they made me. You have to understand that. I don't... Rand was beginning to tense when Matt growled, Dark friend. Pater gave a jerk and half lifted out of his chair, staring wildly around the room as if there were fifty people to overhear. The old man's head was still bent over the broom, his attention on the floor. Pater sat back down and looked from Rand to Matt and back uncertainly. Sweat beaded on his upper lip. It was accusation enough to make anyone sweat, but he said not a word against it. Rand shook his head slowly. After Goat, he knew that Dark Friends did not necessarily have the dragon's fang on their foreheads, but except for his clothes, this Pater could have fit in right in Emmons Field. Nothing about him hinted at murder or worse. Nobody would have remarked him twice. At least Goat had been... different. Leave us alone, Rand said, and tell your friends to leave us alone. We want nothing from them, and they'll get nothing from us. If you don't, Matt added fiercely, I'll name you for what you are. See what your village friends think of that. Rand hoped he did not really mean it. That could cause as much trouble for the two of them as it did for Pater. Pater seemed to take the threat seriously. His face grew pale. I... I heard what happened at Four Kings. Some of it, anyway. Word travels. We have ways of hearing things, but there's nobody here to trap you. I'm alone, and... And I just want to talk. About what? Matt asked at the same time that Rand said, We're not interested. They looked at each other, and Matt shrugged. We're not interested, he said. Rand gulped the last of the milk and stuffed the heel of his half of the bread into his pocket. With their money almost gone, it might be their next meal. How to leave the inn. If Pater discovered that Matt was almost blind, he would tell others. Other dark friends. Once Rand had seen a wolf separate a crippled sheep from the flock. There were other wolves around, and he could neither leave the flock nor get a clear shot with his bow. As soon as the sheep was alone, bleeding with terror, hobbling frantically on three legs, the one wolf chasing it became ten as if by magic. The memory of it turned his stomach. They could not stay there either. Even if Pater was telling the truth about being alone, how long would he stay that way? Time to go, Matt, he said, and held his breath. As Matt started to stand, he pulled Pater's eyes to himself by leaning forward and saying, Leave us alone, dark friend. I won't tell you again. Leave us alone. Pater swallowed hard and pressed back in his chair. There was no blood left in his face at all. It made Rand think of a murderall. By the time he looked back at Matt, Matt was on his feet, his awkwardness unseen. Rand hastily hung his own saddlebags and other bundles around him, trying to keep his cloak over the sword as he did. Maybe Pater already knew about it. Maybe Goat had told Baalzaman, and Baalzaman had told Pater. But he did not think so. He thought Pater had only the vaguest idea of what had happened in Four Kings. That was why he was so frightened. The comparatively bright outline of the door helped Matt make a beeline for it, if not quickly, then not slow enough to seem unnatural either. Rand followed closely, praying for him not to stumble. He was thankful Matt had a clear, straight path with no tables or chairs in the way. Behind him, Pater suddenly leaped to his feet. Wait, he said desperately. You have to wait. Leave us alone, Rand said without looking back. They were almost to the door and Rand had not put a foot wrong yet. Just listen to me, Pater said and put his hand on Rand's shoulder to stop him. Images spun in his head. The trollic Narg leaping at him in his own home. The Murdral threatening at the stag and lion and bear lawn. Half men everywhere. Fades chasing them to Shadar Logoth coming for them in Whitebridge, dark friends everywhere. He whirled, his hand balling up. I said, leave us alone! His fist took Pater flush on the nose. The dark friend fell on his bottom and sat there on the floor staring at Rand. Blood trickled from his nose. You won't get away, he spat angrily. No matter how strong you are, the great lord of the dark is stronger. The shadow will swallow you. 
There was a gasp from further in the common room, and the clatter of a broom handle hitting the floor. The old man with the broom had finally heard. He stood staring wide-eyed at Pater. The blood drained from his wrinkled face, and his mouth worked, but no sound came out. Pater stared back for an instant, then gave a wild curse and sprang to his feet, darting out of the inn and down the street as if starving wolves were at his heels. The old man shifted his attention to Rand and Matt, looking not a whit less frightened. Rand hustled Matt out of the inn and out of the village as fast as he could, listening all the while for a hue and cry that never came, but was no less loud in his ears for that. Blood and ashes, Matt growled. They're always there, always right on our heels. We'll never get away. No, they're not, Rand said. If Baalzaman knew we were here, do you think he'd have left it to that fellow? There'd have been another goad, and twenty or thirty bully boys. They're still hunting. But they won't know until Pater tells them, and maybe he really is alone. He might have to go all the way to Four Kings, for all we know. But he said, I don't care. He was unsure which he, Matt, meant, but it changed nothing. We're not going to lie down and let them take us, 